Greetings. Welcome to Tribal Jazz Man Scholar. I want to talk about one of my heroes, <clears throat> a woman named Mildred Norman. She was actually known during most of her lifetime as Peace Pilgrim. She gave up her name. This is her book. It's not uh, written by her. It's assembled by friends of hers after she passed away. It says her life and work in her own words. <clears throat> this book was given to me by my brother when I was about 25 years old. And I actually, I looked at the cover and this woman walking down the street with Peace Pilgrim written across her her blouse. And I, you know, I was appreciative and I, I thought it was a little weird. So I set it up on the shelf and uh, about three years later, I was... I had been working in northern Mexico in a squatter settlement, and uh, I got really sick. I got meningitis, viral meningitis, and I was hospitalized back in Los Angeles. And I was in hospital for a few days, um, and I got out, and I was in bed for two or three weeks. And I would get out of bed, and I'd feel more or less okay, but I felt kind of jet-lagged and kind of cloudy and tired, and I'd get back in bed. And this was going on, and I was starting to think, I'm not going to get well. I was getting worried. Anyway, part of the story I want to tell is about my own healing from meningitis and also about my, my, my meeting of this remarkable woman, Peace Pilgrim, and a little bit about her life. But um, about two and a half, three weeks into this meningitis, uh, you know, infirmary, uh, lying in bed at my parents' house, not able to, they were out of town, I wasn't able to really function. I, I walked over to the shelf and I saw a copy of this book on the shelf at my parents' house. I guess my brother had given it to my parents as well. Um, but anyway, I, I pulled the book off the shelf and I sat down and started reading. And I couldn't put this book down. And uh, I read for about two and a half hours and I read two-thirds of the book. And I sat it down and I got up and I was completely well. I didn't have any more symptoms. And I was well from that moment forward. So I finished the book. But um, I was so caught up in the book that, that the implications of having gotten well so suddenly didn't really struck, occur to me. But I, I was so moved and uplifted by that experience of reading about her life, I think it just sent my immune system into overdrive or something. But I don't try to analyze that too much. Mildred Norman grew up in, in, a, in uh, the East Coast in New England. And when she, in 1954... Um, by this time, she was a gray-haired woman. She was an older woman, and she'd spent a lot of her younger life in a lot of political activism, and she'd been a, a newspaper editor. Uh, but by 1954, she made a decision to give up her name and her identity, and she came to Los Angeles wearing a tunic that said Peace Pilgrim on the front, and on the back of her tunic it said, walking 10,000 miles for nuclear disarmament. She had absolutely no possessions, and she all she had was a suitcase, that had a stack of petitions in it. And her commitment was to get signatures on these petitions and then to deliver them to uh, the Congress in Washington, D.C. after walking across the United States. And what she was asking for in the petition was the establishment of a peace department. At that time, in the early 50s, the Defense Department was called the War Department. And she felt like, well, we, we should have a peace department. So this was sort of her modus operandi for for interacting. She would talk about her petition and she'd have people sign it, but she, she wouldn't tell anybody who she was or where she came from or what her background was. And she had a very potent message as well, I should say. She, she basically said, look, the reason our world is struggling is because the individuals in this world are immature. She, she was really big on this idea of maturity and that we live in an immature world and people need to work on themselves. They need to find inner peace and then we will create peace in our families and in our communities and in our nations and in our world. And it was all for her, all boiled down to loving other people. And her message was profoundly simplistic. <clears throat> the book contains interview excerpts with her. She, she ended up being interviewed on many radio stations, in many newspapers. She gave many public talks in churches across the country. She ended up walking across the country. She collected these signatures. And she, she continued to walk. She had two vows in her pilgrimage. The first vow was, I will fast unless offered food. And the second vow was, I will sleep outdoors unless offered shelter. So for 28 years, until 1981, this woman crisscrossed the country seven or eight times on foot. Um, and she walked through Canada. And she refused to have any organizational backing or anything associated with her. So in a way, without organizational backing, she remained relatively unknown. She also didn't want anything associated with her to be part of the money economy. So she 
<clears throat> so the people that assembled her book after her passing um, give the book away. The book is free. You can pay for it, uh, and that supports the work they do, but you can get the book for free um, from the Friends of Peace Pilgrim. And uh, so Mildred Norman slash Peace Pilgrim, and by the way, I didn't learn her name until after um, I began to do some research on her, and when she died in 1981, that was before I came into contact with her book. I read her book in the late 80s. Um, the people who had assembled her book decided to reveal her identity. Um, so I, I've been a sort of a fascin fascinated student of her, of her teachings and her early life as well. I had the privilege of going to the Peace Pilgrim Center when it was located here in California and actually spending a few days with John and Ann Rush, who had been friends of hers and who had been two of the people that assembled the book. They've both since passed away. And I, I spent quite a bit of time going through some old file cabinets, and I found a journal that Peace Pilgrim had written in the early 1940s while she was still Mildred Norman and she was editing a liberal newspaper and she was an incredibly politicized, brilliantly articulate, profoundly deep thinker. And she, uh, in this journal, she has just short vignettes that are relating news of the day or her ideas about things or some philosophical quotes. But it's a, it's a real insight into the, 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 the person who became Peace Pilgrim later, who, whose message from all, for all accounts in this book is extremely simplistic in terms of what it says we need to do. And it boils down to love. And uh, it's a beautiful book and it's a beautiful message and a remarkable woman, definitely a saint uh, in my in my book, from my perspective. Um, in a way, reminded me a lot of St. Francis, um, the life of St. Francis in which he, ref he, he remained a beggar his entire life. He refused any organizational backing the Catholic Church insisted that they that his followers couldn't congregate if they didn't establish an order. And the Franciscan order was established as he was on his deathbed. A library was created while he was dying of tuberculosis, and he was very upset to know that anything associated with him was like a building was associated with him, an order. He didn't want any kind of... He didn't want to be part of any kind of economic system or structure that might then at some point be dealing with money because he really felt like his vow of poverty would be compromised. Well, Peace Pilgrim also had a vow of poverty and the book is still free from Friends of Peace Pilgrim. You can search it on the internet. But the message of Peace Pilgrim is is deeply moving and definitely worthy of study and she's one of my heroes. So this is Tribal Jazzman Scholar. Thanks for joining me.